This short story takes place east of Reno Sparks along the Truckee River. It highlights the life history of the belted kingfisher. They are common along streams and shorelines across America. These little guys seem to have an air of self-importance while patrolling up and down the rivers and shorelines. Its long heavy bill, large head, and prominent chest, contrasting with the small feet and short tail, seem entirely out of balance and give it a top-heavy appearance. But its peculiar proportions are beautifully adapted for the life it leads. The belted kingfisher is one of the few bird species that the female is more brightly colored than the male. These ragged crested birds are powder blue-gray. Males have one blue band across the white breast, while the females have a blue and chestnut band. They spend most of the year alone until they pair up during breeding season. They are monogamous within each breeding season, but form a new pair each year. Kingfishers live mostly on a diet of fish, including minnows, crayfish, insects, amphibians, reptiles, young birds, small mammals, and even berries. They need access to bodies of water for feeding, looking for prey from a perch that overhangs water like a bare branch, telephone wire, or a pier piling. When it spots its prey, it takes flight, dies with its eyes closed, and grabs the prey with its bill. Returning with its prize, it pounds its prey against the perch before swallowing it. Like most birds, nesting and courtship takes place in the spring. The courtship is initiated by the male, chasing the female while calling continuously. The male brings food to the female and attempts to feed it to her. If she isn't interested, the male will eat the fish and hunt for another one. Returning with another meal and offering it to her again. Eventually she accepts the meal and the pairing bond begins. A pair normally selects a nest site during courtship usually high in a bank where floodwaters are unlikely to reach. The site chosen is preferably near water and their favorite hunting grounds. The male and female take turns digging the burrow. The males spend about twice as much time digging as the females. The completed burrow extends three to six feet into the bank, sloping upward so rainwater won't collect inside. Sometimes the male burrows an additional hole near the occupied nest site where it retires to feed and spend the night. During breeding and nesting season, the pair defends its territory against other kingfishers. I was somewhat surprised to see the male aggressively dive and attack a trespassing female. Copulation and egg laying begin within a few days after the nest is completed. During the egg development phase, the female does very little hunting. The male brings the food to her. Diving into the water to catch prey would have an adverse effect on egg development. Eggs are laid early in the morning on consecutive days, approximately 20 to 24 hours apart until the clutch is complete. The clutch size is normally five to eight glossy white eggs, which average one inch in width and one and a half inches long. The female is not attentive to the eggs until the incubation begins, and incubation begins after the last egg is laid. Both sexes incubate by day, but only the female at night. The incubation period is about 23 to 24 days. When the young first hatch, they are helpless, with bare pink skin, blackish bill, and closed eyes. Nestlings chatter continuously and huddle together forming a cluster of interlocking heads and wings. For three to four days after hatching, adults return to the nest with no visible food in their bill, but their stomach is visibly swollen. 
An oily substance of several partially digested fish is regurgitated and shared among the nestlings. After five days, the nestlings consume soft, fleshy prey like tadpoles and small minnows. After a few days, small crayfish became the most common food. As the nestlings grew, the size of the crayfish delivered became larger. Within two weeks, the young were eating full-sized crayfish. The little guys grow so fast and require a lot of feed. After spending the night without any food, they are hungry. So most of the feeding takes place during the cool morning hours. During the heat of the day, very little feeding took place. Occasionally, an adult would visit the nestlings. As with any long-term filming project, I tend to name the animals. These kingfishers are no different. For the male, I chose King Arthur, otherwise known as Arthur. For the female, I chose Queen Elizabeth, or Liz. King Kong, he was the first male to leave the nest. I chose King Kong because of his aggressive nature. Little Lucy, cute little Lucy. She was a female. She was the second to leave the nest. The last to leave the nest was little Johnny. Oh, little Johnny, he was so cute. The little guys departed the burrow 27 to 29 days after hatching. Liz or Arthur would fly to the opening, show them the food, then fly back to the perch all in an effort to encourage them to leave the nest. Little guys performed their best begging acts at the front door. However, mom and dad kept encouraging them. It was a great big scary world out there. Oh my! But their hunger overpowered their fear. And one by one, the little guys flew out of the nesting cavity. The first flight must have been a real challenge. They didn't have the luxury of practicing slapping their wings inside the cavity. Upon flight, they were free as birds. Oh my, they seemed happy, flying up and down the river. Landing took a bit of practice. Little Johnny had a hard landing on his first attempt. Oh, he smacked the branch, fell to the ground laid down there and cussed and carried on. He was okay though. He finally regained his composure and moved on. In an effort to teach the little ones to fly, Arthur or Liz would catch food, land next to him. The little guy would beg and try to retrieve the meal. However, the adult would fly to another perch, encouraging them to follow. Once they flew to the next location, the meal was given to them. This went on for a week or more. Soon they were flying with confidence. The next lesson was diving and catching food. Little Lucy did a fine job diving. She seemed to enjoy plunging into the water time after time. It was almost like a game. In the beginning, they perched and hunted from low-lying branches and rocks in the river. All the little guys had a hard time distinguishing a minnow or crayfish from vegetation. They dive into the river, return to their perch of what they thought was a meal, pound it on the branch to discover it was only grass or a leaf. Arthur and Liz were always close by, observing the little one's efforts bringing them encouragement and a meal from time to time. It was interesting to observe Arthur. After delivering a crayfish or a minnow, he would land close by and stand guard while the young ate it. After they swallowed it, then he'd fly away. After a few days, their hunting skills improved and they started having success.
As Kong, Lucy, and Johnny became more independent, they dispersed up and down the river. I know Arthur and Liz did a wonderful job raising the three little kingfishers. It was with bittersweet emotions I said farewell, wishing them success.